You have been lied to. Software engineers do not code for a living. In fact, only being really good at coding is one of the worst qualities as a software engineer. If you're new here, hi, my name is Sajad. I'm a computer science MS graduate from Georgia Tech. I've been a big tech software engineer for over two years now, starting at the age of 20. And now I talk to over 400,000 students every single day, giving them advice on how to break into big tech. In this video today, I want to compress my over seven years of academic and work experience into one video. And I've made a lot of mistakes throughout my career. And so instead of repeating those mistakes, I'd rather give you guys those as lessons so you can avoid them. And so if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. First, smart people do not get paid. I always thought knowing the most programming languages was really good. My freshman year of college, I made it my mission to learn Java, Python, Swift, JavaScript, as many languages as possible. But turns out that was a wasted effort. In fact, there was a study by the Harvard Business Review. The people who have the highest intelligence or competence, they got paid only the second highest on any given team. So naturally you wonder who actually gets paid the most. Well, turns out it's the people who are the most likable, so learn how to be likable like me. So once I figured that out, my whole game plan changed. In fact, I ended up getting promoted from entry to mid-level software engineer in under two years. And was I the best coder on my team? Absolutely not, but I did these three things to become more likable. One, I took the scrum master role of our software engineering team. So I was in charge every single day of leading a daily stand-up. This is a meeting in which everyone would talk about their status updates for the day and potentially any challenges or blockers that they have. And then being the leader of this meeting, I would be like, hey, let me help solve this for you. Or hey, let me coordinate this thing with this person to help unblock you. Thus, I would help them out and become more likable. Two, I mentored junior engineers and interns. So last summer, we had two interns on our team, and I would help them out throughout the summer, give them one-on-one -on -one meetings, do code reviews for them, and provide any mentorship. And at the end of the summer, I actually took ownership of the project and got it shipped out to production. And this venture single-handedly established me as a leader of my team. Three, quick replies. So you know the term quiet quitting, where I'm not working a second after 5 p.m. because I'm only going to work during this time and I'm not going to let anyone take advantage of me. Well, I don't agree with that. So personally, what I do is I have Slack on my phone and anytime anyone messages me from work, like let's just say my manager messages me at 10 p.m. and this rarely happens, by the way, I would always be the first one to respond. I would get on it right away. Why? Well, it takes me two seconds to acknowledge that I got the message. It's not much work for me to do, but the impact of that is I'm more reliable, responsive, and people just like that more. No one likes getting ghosted. The next piece of advice is geared more towards beginners. And if you are a beginner in computer science, stuff like this is very, very common. <laughs> Working on coding for six hours, and I haven't even gotten one method done, and I feel so stupid. This is what I call the dark side of computer science. So the learning curve for computer science is extremely, extremely steep. It's not like biology or psychology where you just go around memorizing terms, root memorization, in fact, the way that programmers think is just fundamentally different than any field I've ever seen before. Computer science is more of like being a problem solver. In fact, because the learning curve is so steep, that's why we see a lot of first and second year students really struggle in this field because they can't fundamentally change the way that they think. Now, if you are in this position or you are a freshman or a sophomore, all hope is not lost. Trust me, there's a way out of this. So what I like to do, or one of my friends told me that this really helped them, every single day do one leet code problem. If you don't know, Leet Code is like this software engineering interview site to kind of give you practice problems, but slowly chipping away each problem every single day, starting off with the easiest, going to medium, then hard, you sort of train your brain in the right way of thinking because you start off every single day being a problem solver. Now, if you're really lost and stuck and can't solve a single problem on Leet Code, then what I recommend you do is pull up a Leet Code browser on one half of your screen. On the second half, pull up a Geeks for Geeks article on the solution of that leak code problem. Now, why do I say Geeks for Geeks? Well, Geeks for Geeks is actually an excellent guide to literally answer every single leak code problem. It gives you a brute force solution, an optimal solution, and an optimized or best optimal solution. By the way, this is not sponsored, but they should probably sponsor me. The third thing that I want to say is the nine to five software engineering job is dead. You see, ever since COVID hit in March of 2020, companies realized two things. It doesn't matter when you work or where you work. And me personally, I'm based in the East Coast, but my team is based in the West Coast in California. And so their nine to five is actually a 12 to eight for me. But can you imagine 
actually working a 12 to 8 shift. Like, just, just imagine how awful that would be. Every single day you finish work when the sun is set. That would just be terrible for your mental health. And so I don't do that. I talked to my manager and I was like, I cannot work those hours. So instead, I work some semblance of a 10.30 to 6.30. But the key thing is, if you're a good software engineer, meaning you're getting all your work done and you're getting your meetings done, no one actually cares when you work. The biggest piece of advice here is if you are starting a new software engineering internship or job, in the first two weeks, work all hours. Don't try to be that person where like, oh, I'm only working nine to five. Don't do that. Don't do that. Actually work potentially even longer than nine to five so you can identify which hours actually work best for you. Like for example, if you work really well between 8 a.m. to 9 a.m., that one hour could be worth maybe four hours between 1 p.m. and 5 p.m. because you have a post-lunch coma or something like that. At the end of the day, Work smart, not hard. Four, it's okay to skip class because GPA does not matter. With the exception of one company, no company has ever asked me to submit my GPA when I was applying for a software engineering job or internship. So why did I work during college so hard to get a 4.0 GPA? I have no clue. It was probably a big mistake. So learn from my mistake. And so if you're going to classes in which the teacher is not teaching very, very well, and it's not very important material, and you can potentially learn it online or through like resources or textbooks, do that option. because. I personally would much rather have someone who has a 2.0 GPA but has excellent projects and internships rather than a person with a 4.0 GPA but nothing to their name. And so if you're in college, here are three things that you need to focus on right now. One, internships. Internships are very, very important. You need to stack up your resume, especially if you're a freshman or a sophomore. Two, projects. One of the biggest advantages of college is you have access to so many research labs and networking opportunities. Take advantage of that. When I was at Georgia Tech, I worked as a research assistant for the lab of interactive computing. I use genetic algorithms to solve a resource allocation problem. And the bright side of all this was the research professor at the end gave me a letter of recommendation for my master's program. And that master's program helped me earn even more money when I started my software engineering job. Three, skills. So I lied. You shouldn't skip every single class. There are some classes in your computer science degree that actually help you build your software engineering arsenal, whether that teach you Java, Python, JavaScript, or they do a lot of project-based learnings. Those are excellent classes that you should always attend to and do the assignments 100% honestly. But other than that, if they're not directly building up your skills, they're kind of useless. As you can see, internships, projects, and skills, three very critical sections onto your resume you need to focus on, do really well on, and stack your resume before you graduate college. Number five, the most dangerous one on this entire list, one that I'm personally failing at horrendously, and this is the thing that will crush the hopes and dreams of every single software engineer out there golden handcuffs. So what are they? So you know how software engineers earn a lot of money? Like big tech software engineers can earn like $200,000 a year just starting out right out of college. And on top of that, if they join a company like Google or Meta, they give like free food, free perks, free gym, free massages. And on top of all of that, if their stock valuation, which is a good amount of their compensation goes up, they can actually start earning like 300K, 400K at the age of like 24, 25. So ridiculous amounts of money but anything nice comes at a cost. You see, as you continue to progress through your career ladder and you get promotion, raises, and all these nice things, the whole golden handcuff thing Titans, meaning that the tech company will give you a lot of good golden stuff, but they have a tight grasp of you. You are not leaving their company no matter what. You are at their mercy. You have built a whole life centered around the salary that they offer you, centered around the perks that they offer you. And this is really awful because everyone I've talked to, including you probably right now, want to start a business at some point in your life. Everyone wants to become an entrepreneur. But the problem is no one has the guts to become an entrepreneur. No one wants to take that risk of cutting their juicy big tech salary down. And this is especially worse for tech people because there are so many ver venture capitalists right now that are funding all these like simple GPT wrapper projects. And so you can actually make way more outside of your job than you are in your big tech job. I mean, like think about it, a senior software engineer at Google probably can code on average better than most people on this world. You don't think that they can get like a GPT wrapper project like this and earn millions of dollars like this? Okay, maybe not like this, but maybe like a little while 
while after that. You get the point. It's not that difficult for them. But in order to do that, they need to be able to say, okay, Google, I'm quitting my job tomorrow because I want to focus on this. And then they have to go through like six months of not working a job, which is terrible because they're not going to get hundreds of thousands of dollars. They're not going to get their free food. They're not going to get their free massages. Their whole lifestyle changes. And so the biggest piece of advice right here is don't get attached to your job. Treat it as a place to learn and earn. And that is it. Because anything beyond that will actually ruin you in the long term. And also they can lay you off at any time. So those golden handcuffs, they can chop just like that. Well, that's about all I have in this video. I really hope that you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you are curious about how people actually get into top companies like Google, you might like this video right here.